let's jump right in. This video will be going over some hidden mechanics of the game, Conquerors 3, that most beginners or intermediate players may not be familiar with. Now, if you're, I would say, advanced level at this game, then I'd say only a couple of things you may not know. <coughs> but anyway, without further ado, let's get started. first mechanic I'll be going over is one that everyone should know and should be doing but in case you're a real beginner at the game it's micromanaging what this basically means is that you're taking your wounded frontline troops and your actively wounded frontline troops taking them from the frontline to the backline and uh, in this method, you'll be maintaining the same DPS throughout the battle, as long as you don't, as long as you prevent the deaths of the backline troops. This is just something that you have to do in order to maintain an edge in uh, the Conqueror's Three. But of course, it isn't the only thing that you that leads to victories. Having a good team, and um, in certain maps, base placements of the allies together. Um, but yeah, if you use micromanaging, it'll definitely give you an edge over your opponents. So as you can see here, I'm currently micromanaging my troops, sending them from the front line to the back line and maintaining consistent DPS. Although I do lose one troop, it's fine. Though in an actual match you don't want to you you want to strive not to lose any troops if possible. Uh, the enemy is not micromanaging, so they're obviously gonna lose if I'm using this tactic against them. Because they can't maintain the same DPS because all their troops are dying. And yeah, you did this is just one example of many. You can use this for all your battles, all your battles. Against buildings, units, naval units, everything basically. That's why it's so important and it's why everyone should be doing it in the first place. Next up is the uh, inconsistent explosive tank damage mechanic. Now, after some testing, I've uh, deducted that this is caused by certain skin sets. One of which is this old sci-fi. I don't know about any others, but old sci-fi is the one that definitely has this issue. Or, well, inconsistent, you see. I think it's a cool mechanic, but again, it's luck based and I don't think Broken likes that. But anyway, I tried to use default tanks and it always it always took down command centers by four. And then I swapped to uh, sci-fi for this demonstration because I've in m various matches I've used sci-fi explosives and I've seen that it could take one tank to kill it or up to four so I went ahead and did that I I think I've gotten down to two in footage I could not get one I don't know how to get one it's just random I think it has to do something with the position of the explosive tanks but anyway, I don't rem recommend using explosives, especially against competent people because you can counter it easily. But if you do use explosive tanks, I do recommend using this skin because I know for a fact that this causes an inconsistency. Default 
definitely no inconsistency there, but for this certain skin, it, it does happen. Okay, not sure why, and I'm not sure about any other skins, but um, it happens. And you may not have noticed it, may have. One relatively unknown mechanic is the fire nukes ability to penetrate shields. And I, I don't mean that it destroys the shield and goes through it. It just, it only goes through it. If that, if that makes any sense. So basically the missile goes through the shield and uh, the fire spreads within. This is very situational, however. You cannot see yourself to take down a shield using whatever arm you have. Then you should definitely use a fire nuke. Otherwise, the regular nuke is definitely superior due to its instantaneous output. And, um... The fire nuke is just overtime damage and it's capped at certain limits of spreading I believe it's 11 but that's uh, that's according to the wiki um, but yeah the next mechanic is a kind of counter specifically for your army um, this involves using defensive buildings and their garrison ability. So let's say you had your army inside a shield and had a lot of, uh, let's say, lights. Yeah, you had a medic, snipers, uh, repairmen, even. Um, the fire nuke hits and your units are on fire. Many people, including myself at one point, would panic trying to like get out of the freaking shield, get out of the area, even though my units are taking damage and like they're on fire. So, like, what do I do? I didn't figure this out until very recently, but you can, as long as it's as long as you have defensive buildings in the area. You can garrison. You can garrison them inside the, uh, like, a bunker, command center, fort, and it'll get rid of the fire. As long as you, afterwards, after you, were, after you, uh, ungarrison, don't touch any fire, you're good. Like, it, it completely rids of the fire, and they won't take any more damage. Unless they get caught again, caught on fire again. But yeah, it's a I I didn't even know about this uh, mechanic until recently, and like I would always panic. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think I ever got my units on fire recently. I think that might be a yeah, that's a survival thing. I don't think I've actually ever got fire nuked in a game recently anyway. Not many people use fire nuke in uh, conquest matches. But it's definitely something you can counter easy. And I assume not many people know. I mean, I didn't even know. I don't even, I don't even see people talking about it. So, there's that. So this final hidden mechanic is one that I feel a lot of beginners at the game don't fail to understand. Um, so when an enemy just comes to your home island and they go to a, um, a mountain like this that has level 2 or level 3 terrain, they proceed to make a construction yard and then they make a barracks. 
they start making an army and they start destroying all your eco here. Noobs usually leave once that starts happening because they think nothing can be done. There's no way to get up there. How am I supposed to stop this guy from attacking us? Well, it's pretty simple. If you have an airport, you can use helicopters or transports, but most likely when they start making a mountain outpost, it's usually early game where you're not going to have a helicopter. There are two ways you can, or well, I, before I even start talking about the hidden mechanic, you can, if you see someone trying to make a mountain base, you can just send a construction soldier right where they place theirs, and that will stop them from even building anywhere, unless they take yours down. Now, if they've already had the outpost built, you can't really do that. That's not an option. The way you get up there without an airport is that you send a construction soldier or if your base is close enough you build a bunker at the edge of the mountain. It can be level 3 train even but since that's not applicable to this situation I won't do that. So using either the construction yard or close proximity to the base you can you can build the bunker and elevate troops up to level 2 to train or 3 train and then you can go straight ahead to the enemy outpost hopefully you won't encounter any resistance as they're already attacking your eco And voila, your troops are up on level 2, and they can proceed to attack the outpost. I also failed to uh, tell you all, certain buildings can only allow certain troops. The bunker is the most cost effective of any garrison building, except it can't shoot back. But the reason why it's superior is that it can elevate or garrison tanks and troops. Uh, I believe the fort only garrisons uh, soldiers. Uh, the command center and the HQ can garrison both. But they're too pricey for what you're trying to do. Just trying to elevate up to level 2 terrain and kill an outpost. Um, and I think that's all I failed to mention. Yeah, I mean, the bunker's $100, the fort's $200, but it doesn't garrison tanks. Um, 